now now listen benjamin franklin founded a daily newspaper a tabloid benjamin franklin became one of the foremost american diplomats he single-handedly negotiated the french government support for the revolution i hope i'm speaking well in london that was what empowered the american forces to win today there's a benjamin franklin day in america there are only 365 or 360 days in a year they gave a day to one man who died about 300 years ago that is the treasure of wisdom it is not common sense it's a costly sense come and say costly wisdom is not common sense it's costly sense very costly sense very costly sense benjamin franklin read his way into greatness he read his way into leadership he wasn't waiting and wishing for it he was working at it how can someone with a two-year form education found a university that is still relevant today from 19, I mean, 1786 This is a very lazy generation we just lay by and waiting for things to happen we are killed by pleasure killed by pleasure think of michael faraday how many have heard about michael faraday I mean, now i'm talking about these folks because they are believers but they did not abuse the faith. Most of us are abusing the faith. But I said, God, come and cook for me. Thank you, Jesus. Cook for me now. <laughs> God, drive me to work. I don't feel like driving today. <laughs> That's faith abuse. Michael Faraday was a lab. Now, let me tell you a story. He also had a two-year formal education. I noted some of these things in my book, Winning Wisdom. Now, you see, Michael Faraday was also a printing apprentice. It was a booming business in their days. So people learned how to be a printer. So it was there. But every time scientists exhibited their experiment, in those days, they were going about not watching film and videos <laughs> eh? and movies like today. It was a knowledge error. Come on, say knowledge error. Scientists will come in and exhibit the experiment. People pay to enter to watch. Michael Faraday was paying to enter. Small boy, what will you do with science? Now, there was this great physicist in his time. They call him Humphrey Davis. Humphrey Davis was a professor. And then Michael Faraday went to one of those exhibitions and took note now for him to take note with only two years of education he must have equipped himself to even understand the professor he must have equipped himself i mean understand what i'm saying now uh, michael faraday binded the notes and sent it to this professor just to satisfy his printing and then uh, all that how much he enjoyed the lecture so one time a time came when the lab attendant of this professor left and this man needed a lab attendant then he remember a boy gave him a binded note of his lecture one time he said this boy may be interested in being a lab attendant so he rode on his horse back to trace the address and he found michael faraday would you mind being my lab attendant oh with all pleasure so michael faraday was a lab attendant who grew to become a world-class physicist now listen to me in his lifetime, Humphrey David began to be envious of the intellectual capacity of Michael Faraday. In fact, his biographer said he was reasoning more logically than Humphrey Davis. Well, to cut the long story short, you know the story if you're in the sciences. How great a name Michael Faraday made for himself in the field of science. Michael Faraday was not only a believer, he was also a preacher. But sold out to an undying 
quest for knowledge and so earn this place in history we don't talk of wisdom without knowledge now let me say this wisdom is the principal raw material for the making of leaders and knowledge is the principal raw material for the making of wisdom so <laughs> leaders are made of applied knowledge come and say applied knowledge knowledge is not doing what you think <laughs> knowledge is doing what you have discovered